So there's gonna wait for everybody to join in. Live video here before I hit back to New Jersey. It's a really nice track hawk. I wanna show you guys the Stelvio and track hawk go around. This is a really nice price for the track hawk too. Um, I did talk to the dealership about reviewing a Stelvio. They were not cooperative. Uh, they're actually dumping the Alfa Romeo brand, which in my opinion is utterly stupid and ridiculous, but that is just my opinion. Uh, most people would probably agree with me uh, on that and that circumstance. Why would you drop that Alfa Romeo brand from your dealership? I don't know. What's up, guys? I just know that I spoke to the dealership here in North Carolina. And they said, oh, they're going to drop the Alfa Romeo brand completely. It's not making them any money. It's over their head. Uh, that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. But anyway, uh, they do have a track hawk here. Uh, I really am looking at getting a track hawk. I'm definitely not going to buy this track hawk. I'm not going to buy a track hawk from in the state of North Carolina, that's for sure. But it is priced pretty good. Uh, it is priced really good, 85,000. And then you get your add-ons, which are basic. And then if you look at the price, it's 96. That's that's really not bad. Uh, there's no dealer markup on this Trackhawk. So that is a good thing. I absolutely love the yellow Brembos on the Trackhawk. I'm gonna be doing a review on the Trackhawk and most likely buying one later this year. So there's gonna be a lot of content to come if I end up doing that. And that's only if the GT500 isn't ready. You can see the pollen in North Carolina is green and yellow and it's, pretty thin for this time of year, but it can get really thick. You look through, you can see it says track off on the seats. I have to clean the window a little bit. It's, it's a really nice interior, uh, but I don't know. I like my Hellcat. Just figured I would show you guys the track off that they had here because I saw it. In reality, my, my reason for coming here was for the Stelvio and the Julia because that's what I'm looking at as well. Uh, but I don't know what you guys would rather see on the channel. I mean, I'm looking at the GT500 being almost a guarantee unless they don't release it. Hasn't, you know, had a set date yet. So I don't know when it's coming out. And if it's going to be coming out in November of 19, then it's going to be a Stelvio, maybe a Julia or a Trackhawk. But I'm leaning towards a Trackhawk. I figured I'll just come over here and show you a couple of the uh, Julias and the Stelvios. But here we go. This is the Stelvio. This is just the TI, it's not Quadrifoglio or anything like that. Uh, it's a really nice SUV. I, I don't know if I like it better than the Trackhawk. I think it's as nice, maybe, maybe a little nicer. I'm gonna go inside. Look at this Julia though. This Julia is absolutely fucking gorgeous. Um, it's just such a really nice car. I mean, there's just no way to to describe this car except pure beauty. I'm just being honest. It's uh, so nice. Like, so nice. The interior, a lot of people complain about the interior, but I, th I think it's a little bit more refined than people give it credit for. It's really nice and sporty. Uh, I guess you could say to a degree, it feels like you're in a Dodge Charger, just a little different because not quite as big as a Charger but everything overall around seems to be sort of similar. I mean, they're based on completely different chassis, but they have a white one and a black one. There's a base model right here. I don't know if it's a base model, but it's definitely not a quadrifolio, that's for sure. Black looks nice, but you guys know my channel. It's mostly white, so it could end up looking like that if I got a Julia. White does look good. But for some reason, the Julia looks best in red or blue. Like that blue right there. It would have to be red or that blue. Some maybe, someone can maybe chime in and say what color that is. Because I don't know the name for it. But I'm going to go inside the showroom for sure. And uh, believe it or not, they have uh, another track off right here. That's definitely a lot better. No doubt, white. So, yeah, you know, that's definitely a lot better than silver for me. White, white it is. And not bad on the price too. Yep, not bad at all. So I, I think that, uh, I think if I was to go with a track hog, it would have to be white. 
It would have to be white or black, one or the other. It's the only two colors I really like. What do you guys think? White Trackhawk, definitely, uh, definitely an awesome car right there. I mean, if I was gonna get a Trackhawk, like I said, it'd be white or black, but now you have the Stelvio right here. And I just, the Julia and the Stelvio are just fantastic. I mean, oh my God. Look at the Julia and the Stelvio here. First, we're gonna look at the Stelvio. The interior is very refined though. A lot of people say it's plasticky and cheap. I, I feel like it's very similar to the Charger and the Trackhawk. It's got like a wood grain, a black wood grain trim. Well, which would make it not really wood, but if you look inside the Stelvio, there's a lot of foot room, uh, to be honest, not. Um, but the design is nice, and it's not that anything feels cheap. Uh, it does, absolutely does not feel cheap. It's just that on the Jeep Grand Cherokee, everything is very expensive, and the leather on the Hellcat and Trackhawks and Grand Cherokees are all just really, really nice. Uh, this leather is by far fake. Uh, it, it's just, it's not, it's not real leather. And it's $44,000, which isn't really a bad price. Uh, um, this is not uh, the Quadrifolio though. Now, maybe the Quadrifolio has better interior. I don't know. Uh, I do like the interior design. I just think that the leather on the seat should be better. Uh, if you notice, uh, the headliner is nowhere near as good as a Hellcat or an SRT. And if you look around here, all the plastic, it, do, it just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem as good as uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee or the Durango for that matter. The Durango that has the wrap dash is better. Now the dashboard on the Stelvio is nice. Um, the, the, the dashboard is nice, very nice material on the dash, the, the, the screen here, the way they've designed everything inside is really good. Uh, the overall design, I can't, I can't lie. Uh, the design is nice. I like it. I think they did a good job designing the edges, designing the corners, designing the shapes, just putting places in certain spots and overall everything about the car looks good on how they designed it they just cheaped out on the seats uh, everything else in the interior seems to be okay except the seats uh, and the seats are okay but they feel like something that you get out of a kia and i'm, I'm not saying that to be mean uh, or or rude to uh, alfa romeo but it's just that you know i i got a hellcat srt durango i got a type r integra and i've driven different cars and reviewed lots of cars and the seats in the stelvio are just not they're not good at all. They, at least this one's not good. Quadrifolio might have better seats. I know they have the uh, Recaro racing seats as an option, uh, but the leather seats that come in the Quadrifolio and all the other cars, the leather is not good. Um, well, let me re just rephrase that. Uh, the leather is okay. It's not what you'd expect on a car like this though. That's for sure. The steering wheel, however, the steering wheel is really nice. It's a little skinny for my taste. I like the start engine here on the Quadrifolio, it's red. Uh, the steering wheel is nice. It's leather. It does feel uh, better than the seats, but not as good as the SRT steering wheel. Uh, the steering wheel itself definitely uh, needs to be thicker, and the leather is not real. It's definitely not real, but it does feel better than the seats do. As you can see, seats are hard as a rock. If you drive in the Quadrif or you drive in the Stelvia, whether it's Quadrifolio or not, if it has these seats, you're going to be hurting. Your back's going to hurt long distance. Uh, I like how the vents can move them around that's that's pretty cool only on the ends the center vents are pretty much standard to every other vehicle the interior view is nice you know i do like the stelvio uh, when you're sitting in the stelvio it does not feel like a trackhawk or a durango srt it feels like you're sitting in a car uh, it's not very uh it's just not very truck feeling like the trackhawk in my opinion uh you know if you go over here after everything i just showed you on the seat so if you remember the stelvio you press down in the seat uh, this door is probably closed anyway. Yeah, it is. But if you compare the seats right there, we're not even in the same category. We're talking about uh, Alcantara leather, uh, Laguna leather over top of suede. Uh, and I've been in a lot of SRTs and the Laguna leather is real. It's uh, expensive to add on. So, and this is, you can tell it's a lot higher than the Stelvio. Now the Stelvio is a gorgeous SUV. The problem is, is the Trackhawk is a better is a better SUV. I mean, even the base model, uh, the base model Jeep is probably better than the base model Stelvio. It's just something about, the Jeep just has a higher quality. It's just plain and simple. 
Uh, Dodge cut no expense when they made the Jeeps. Jeeps are very, very high quality interior, especially the SRT. I would go as far as to say that if you get a top trim SRT or Trackhawk Jeep, you're right there with Mercedes or BMW, in my opinion, as far as quality. I just, Jeeps are very high quality. Uh, the Durango SRT is as well, and Dodge are really stepping up. Not sure what's going on with Alfa Romeo right now, but uh, the seats, like I said, I'm not a fan. Uh, let's look at the Julia right quick. Now, uh, I am gonna be doing a full review on these cars. Right now is just a quick passerby because I was here and saw the car and wanted to give you guys a little bit of content on the Julia. Um, I, I love the wheels on the Julia, and I also love the Brembos. Uh, and I, I think that the yellow on the blue really sets this car off. I'm not gonna lie, uh, the Julia is probably the sexiest sedan I've seen in a long time besides the Charger. I really like it. Um, if you wanna know my opinion, I would like to beef up the rear. I think the wheels need to be spaced more out and it needs m more meat back there. They're too, they're too concave. If you look at that, it needs a little bit more meat. Uh, I definitely would not be running uh, these tires on this car if I bought it. There's absolutely no way I would keep them. Uh, 225 40 series on a 19 is, is a stretch tire. It's something you'd run on a BMW. I guess that's what they're going for. On this wheel, on a 19, I wouldn't be running 225s. As you can see, uh, it's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, I would not do that at all. If I was to buy this car, I would be running 255, 255 40 is what I would run. So the fact is the sidewall would probably come up to about there and it would poke out to about here and get some meat on these tires because this might be good for cornering and performance, but you're not gonna get no traction with a sidewall like this, uh, especially if it's a quadrifolio, 505 horsepower. I mean, it just, it just makes no sense to me the, to have stretched tires like that, but uh, it's a gorgeous sedan. And uh, from the looks of it, the interior is, is uh, very nice. The leather is definitely real on the Julia. On at, least, at least right here, it feels like it could be real. Uh, the sides are definitely not, but this feels completely different. Could be wrong, it does feel real though. In the center at the sides, the same, the same leather that you would get in the uh, you know, Stelvio. Now, if you're looking at the seats, if you guys don't know, this is a design that Alfa Romeo is, is most likely copying. Uh, the old, BMW uh, M3s, the E46 M3s used to have their seats come out like this and you could extend them to support your legs for the long distance trip. Uh, the interior on the Stelvio and the Julia are both nice, but I think the Julia is a much nicer design interior, uh, just the way it is. They're very similar in ways, but I just like the wheel that's in the Stelvio, same push button. Uh, very similar screen, if not almost identical. The dash is shaped a little differently, but it's using the same materials. Uh, the seats in the Julia are more comfortable, by far more, more comfortable than the Stelvio uh, as far as the bolsters. If you notice, the bolsters touch my ribs completely. I don't feel like I'm sliding around, like I can't really move. If you see, if I move left and right, there's almost no movement. So the Julia uh, is really well fit for a guy my size and I'm six foot, 160 pounds. So if I would say if you're under 200 pounds and not you know over six foot two you're going to be tight fitted in these seats and that's what you want when you're going around corners or racing or doing things like that so the julia is a, a much more race feeling obviously as it's a car uh but if you look at the center console here where the shifter is uh it's just really nice design it's very like european of course because that's where fiat is from and alfa romeo so it feels similar to a bmw in ways like this is a very similar shifter to the BMW E46 or E90 series. Overall, when you're when you're in the Julia, you feel like it's kind of a BMW knockoff per se. I, I wouldn't really want to go that far because, in my opinion, I do like the direction that Alfa Romeo is going versus BMW. Uh, but the quality is just not there for the leather. I do like the moonroof uh, and everything else inside the car. They're not going to work because the key's not here, but. Uh, the speedometer says 160 miles an hour. I'm pretty sure it would do that. If it was a quadrifolio, it would do it no problem. I wish I could review it, uh, but not here. Maybe at another dealership, they've got another moonroof back here. If this package had some type of real leather add-on or Laguna add-on to go with all this stuff, and this was the quadrifolio, uh, it's a really nice car for $70,000, but there's no way I would spend $70,000 if I didn't get real leather 
Um, and of course the engine itself with the red push button start and the other goodies that come with it. I do like the stereo system though, how they've set the tweeters inside the door. You can see the tweeters are in the back doors. Overall, the design of the Julia is very good. Uh, this is not a quadrifolio, but looking at this package, uh, I would like to have this package because I don't like the red calipers on the Julia. I don't. I like the yellow. So if I was to design and build my own Julia that I wanted for myself, it would be this package with the quadrifolio engine and it would have that color. So that blue outside with this package with the quadrifolio engine, as long as I could get better quality seats, then the Julia is worth $70,000. The only thing about this car I don't like is the fake seats. And, and some people might say, oh, you're, you're complaining too much. And uh, I, I'm really not. The thing is I drive a Hellcat and I have real 100% Laguna leather. And it says that it's Australian cowhide right on the tag and as does the Trackhawk and all the SRT vehicles. When you sit in real leather and have a real leather wrapped steering wheel and all the leather in your car is real, when you go to fake, you notice the difference. And because this car is $70,000, that's something that would have to be rectified for me to spend it. Other than that though, I would, as long as I could get the Quadrifolio in this trim with that, that blue color outside and I could get it with real leather, it's worth $70,000 all day long. Now, if I can get that color with Quadrifolio and I can't get it with that you know, uh, upgrade on the leather, then that would be a, a problem for me. I would wanna talk them down or, or work on something, but it is a nice car. It is a very nice car. Uh, I would love to review the Quadrifolio. I wonder what the price tag is on this. See, that's not bad though, 39. Getting this in the mid 40s, this is well worth it, which explains the leather, I guess. Uh, to, be, to be totally honest, and, and I'm not saying this just because, you know, I like the Julia, but $40,000 for this is worth it. If you look at the 335 from BMW, they're priced in the 55,000 range. If you get a 335, you're gonna spend $10,000 more, easy. Now, is that car faster than this? At this point, I haven't looked at the specs, I don't know. I just know for a fact that I like the look of the Julia much better than a 335. I owned a 335 uh, and the interior sucked. Uh, the leather was stiff, just like the Julia, it was no better. Uh, so the Hellcat's leather is better than the 335 as I've owned one. I owned a 2011. I also owned an E46 M3 2004 and the leather was okay, but the, the uh, Julia has the same leather. So the leather on the Hellcat is better than the BMW or the Alfa Romeo. Doesn't matter, it's, it's better leather. So uh, if basically what this is competing with is the BMW and I will have to tell you guys that in my opinion, I like the look of the Julia better. Uh, the leather in both cars suck, so we can check that off. Uh, I like the wheel design better on the Alpha uh, than I do the BMW. I like the nose better. I like the, the rear end better. I just overall like the look better. So you're gonna save 10,000, and if you get the Quadrifolio, you're not gonna save 10,000. You're gonna spend 10,000 more. But uh, in reality, what it really comes down to is if you're just looking for looks um, and you don't care about zero to 60 times or anything like that, and you wanna save some money, the Julia, in my opinion, and I haven't driven it, but, but based on looks and price, the Julia is the better car of the two. Um, but I've driven M3s and I've driven 335s and I've owned them both. I'm gonna be driving uh, the Julia Quadrifolio and I will let you guys know if it's better than the BMW and how it drives. But I really find it hard uh, for anybody to gripe when you're getting a European Italian car that's gonna have 505 horsepower, twin turbo V6, zero to 60 in like 3.6 seconds, quarter mile times in the high 11s, low 12s, and it looks that that sexy, and you're gonna get it for 70,000, good luck. The BMW M3 is well into the 80, $85,000 mark. And, and I think that the Quadrifolio is an amazing engine and the Julia is a better car. So um, if I was gonna you know, give you guys uh, some answers to some questions, if you're wondering what's the better car, you're gonna spend about 10,000 less on any Julia uh, on par with BMW. So 335 versus this model or M3 uh, versus a Quadrifolio. No matter how you hack it, uh, you, the Alfa Romeo is better. I mean, the M3, don't quote me, I'm sure you guys can Google this now, but I'm pretty sure the M3, 2016, 17 M3, or the M4 is around 435 horsepower. I think that's what it is, 435. 
uh, and it's heavier than the Julia. Well, the Quadrifoglio has got like 70 more horsepower at 505. So if you line a Julia up, a Quadrifoglio Julia up with an M3 with equal drivers, equal conditions, the Julia is gonna win every time and it's 20 grand less, 15, 20 grand less, depending on the package. So in reality, the Julia is the better buy in a lot of ways. And you know, there may be a lot of guys with BMWs that say, oh, the BMW interior is better, the interior this, the interior that, they're not. I own BMWs, the interior sucks. Uh, it's it's not much better than the Julia if it even is better. Uh, if you guys want the honest opinion on interior, I think the Trackhawk has a better interior than the BMW does, way better. The M3 doesn't even have nowhere near as nice of interior as the Trackhawk or the SRT Jeep does, or the Hellcat for that matter. Um, so what it really you know boils down to uh, is you know simply taste and stuff stuff like that. If you ask me. I fully believe that the Julia in this trim right here, I'd like it to have the yellow calipers, quadrifolio, and full trim on this car. This is a much, much better uh, vehicle than the M3, in my opinion, for the money, because it's less money and faster. Other interior, and up the price $2,000. Like get a much better leather interior and then it's solid. 505 horsepower for 70 grand is what the going market is. And they've got the market undercut by 10 or 15,000 plus dollars. They just got to improve some of the interior a little bit. And if you look at Motor Trend, you'll see that uh, Jason Lieberman said the same thing. He said that the interior feels a little bit cheap and it does on the seats, especially on the seats. But other than that, the car is absolutely phenomenal and I can't wait to drive it. When I get back to Jersey, I'm going to try to review uh, the you know quadrifolio uh, Julia we'll ask my dad he's over here we'll ask him what he thinks but I'm, I'm telling you guys I really love the Julia and I can't wait to get behind the wheel of it it's a very gorgeous sedan in my opinion like I said for the money you can't go wrong so what do you think of the Stelvio yeah he doesn't like the Stelvio well I'll tell you what that one right over there is the one for me that, that blue alpha is the one I might get next. I don't know yet. I'm still trying to decide because yeah, Dan, I can see what you're saying uh, about uh, reliability. What's up, Sean? What's up, Richard? What's up, What's up Hamza? Yeah, it, it really comes down to taste. Uh, maybe, maybe they're gonna step up and, and be better. Uh, than they were better reliability who knows where it's going i just know that this dealership is dropping the alpha brand and there's just no denying that the julia is an absolute gorgeous car and i want to review it so when i get back to jersey i'm going to the new york auto show tomorrow uh, i got a guy a subscriber coming in to race me in his camaro ss that's coming up going to be doing a review on the julia on the stelvio in the next week or two as well as the auto show so a lot of good stuff coming guys i just figured i'd stop by this dealership before i hit the road back home uh this way i could show you guys an up close look because i saw they had a bunch of stelvios and julias here and i think they look awesome if you ask me they're very very sexy uh, sedan and suv I was kidding. It's nice. Oh, my dad was kidding. <laughs> uh, John, I don't know if I'm going to go to uh, DeFame. Uh, I might be going to Mike's YouTube call out in Cecil Park Dragway at the end of the month. I might be there. I heard that he's doing another one. Uh, one last look before I go, guys, of the, the Alpha Julia. Let's see what my dad thinks of the Julia, too. Hey, what do you think of this? I'm gonna call my dad over and see what he thinks of the Julia. Hey dad, what do you think of the Julia? You like that one? Look at that one there. Well, besides the color, do you like the style? That's all right, it's okay. What's that one there called? Julia. Oh, the Julia. Yeah, the Julia is their Alpha sedan. Fiat and, and Alfa Romeo and Dodge are all together now. I like like it if they called it Julian. Julian with an N. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a car. The only downfall, like I said, guys, of the Julia is the interior is very plasticky compared to the Hellcat of the Jeep. 
other than that, it's a very nice car. But you know what? I'll tell you guys something. Kia had the shittiest car in the world in the 90s and in the early 2000s. Now they made the Stinger. They're really coming up. They've really made it. Same with Hyundai. Shittiest car in the 90s. Literally shittiest. And now they make a great car. Alpha had some trouble. Now they've released the Stelvio and the Julia. Let's see what they do. Let's give them another five to 10 years to see what they come up with. Hopefully in the next five or sooner, but let's just see what they're doing. Because I think that right now they're making great strides in the right direction, that's for sure. John, I'm not moving to PA, I'm staying in Jersey, but I will have a Menlo meet. This Tuesday, there might be a Menlo meet, but it might be closer to where I live now because I moved south. So we might do the, the meet somewhere in the freehold area. I'll let you guys know, I'll keep you updated. But that's gonna do it, guys, for today's video, live at the Alfa Romeo dealership here in North Carolina. My home, if you guys are wondering, this is where I'm from, North Carolina. So that's where I'm at right now. Dodge dealership across the street. Crown, that's the dealership that fucked up my alignment and damaged my calipers on my wheels. So if you guys live in North Carolina, stay away from Crown. They're absolute junk. They wouldn't even call me back to repair my calipers. Crown, straight junk. Seriously. Absolute shit dealership, if you ask me. But uh, this is Rick Hendrick, which is a totally different dealership where I'm at right now. Uh, fuck them guys back there. They damaged seventy thousand dollar car and didn't want to didn't want to take responsibility for it. So the hell with them. So I just figured I put them on blast. Plus they admitted to selling Hellcats for a hundred thousand to the military and taking advantage of the military. And if you ask me, that's bullshit too. But that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys had fun looking at the Julia, the Stelvio, and the Trackhawks, both of them. I like the white Trackhawk. When this video live feed is over, go back to the video and leave comments and a thumbs up and let me know what do you guys think. GT500, Stelvio, Julia, or Trackhawk. Those are the cars I've been solidly looking at and I cannot wait for later on this year. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Sean. Thanks to everybody who watched the live feed. Thick Lover, Hemi, and of course, Sean and everybody else that's in here. Thanks so much for watching. Richard, uh, we're going to see you guys in the next video. I got the vlogs coming back. But just comment on this video and the live feed is over. Let me know what you guys think. But until the next video, Corey with Drive with Demons. Remember, have fun. Be safe.